Hey everyone, this is Oliver Hoyas and today I have Nedi from the port of Spain with me and we are going to discuss how she chose the green tranquility painting for her art collection. This was one of my first, like uh, one of my early paintings in 2019 or 2018 even, I'm not sure. But anyways, before I'm getting ahead of myself, Nedi, why don't you introduce yourself quickly and your interest in art? Um, so hi Oliver, I'm Nadine Kapalani, I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, Port of Spain is a city there. Um, I think I, I, well I'm a clinical psychologist here, so um, one of the things we do is art therapy, sanitary therapy, um, creative art therapy, so I do that as my profession, um, so I love having adults and kids just Take their hands and paints and create things because it's very much a way of them expressing their emotions, their traumas, and being able to um, learn from it and cope with it and 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 grow. Um, but otherwise, I most of the other painting your your piece is actually the first piece I've purchased for my home. The others are all ones that I did um, for myself, <laughs> um, just for fun though. <laughs> So, I mean, I very much appreciate and love the work that you did. So I'm really grateful that I got, I got one of your early ones. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I can remember when, uh, when we talked, that was, that was when it's, yeah, that was in 2019 when it started for me. Right. So you also got an amazing deal, but yeah, I think that that happens when you, you know, when you see something, when you see an opportunity and you take action early, you, you get great deals. <laughs> And uh, but before we talk about this, re when you remember back in in your past as a kid or wherever, like was there were your parents into art or yeah how yeah what's your story and about art? Um, my well, my sister's a, a, an artist. She does um, mm. graphic art and and work for movies and all those kind of things. So my older sister she always used to bring me to come and paint so ever since we were kids we had our own paint table or, or coloring or whatever mm -hmm. um she would have me take crayons and melt it on bottles or paint things around the mm -hmm. house my mom would have me painting walls um <clears throat> i painted um i painted dolphins all over my room i painted her ceilings my mom has always encouraged us to just have fun um you know so my mom taught my sister and then my sister taught me and they were they were always whenever you're bored there was no such thing as television and um you know playing on video games or on the computer there was there was none of that we didn't have internet so you made fun um in different ways and you know we weren't so much that we liked to read um we were terrible readers, <laughs> but we like to play games and we like to color. We like to paint. We like to do all sorts of stuff. So I think well, that was one way of keeping us <laughs> a little bit settled and quiet and doing things. Mm -hmm. um, but there was it was always encouragement to do so. And it was always, OK, well, this is teaching, teaching me. OK, you can put this here. You can use these colors to enhance something. Um, you know, my, my mother's always about uh, feng shui. So even the colors from my house, she's like um, trying to see what would, would brighten and uplift and, and create the energy that you want to have. So with my mom and my sister carrying on that um, for me, mm -hmm. I was able to grow and understand that and make a career also in a different way out of it. Mm -hmm. So it's a part of me. It's something that I do for fun. It's something that um, I do as in, in, in career, but it's really because of them. They encouraged totally. It wasn't a, um, this is terrible. It wasn't a, a, crit a criticism. It was always, a, this is what you can do to make this look better. This is what will match well. Mm -hmm. um, but always encouraging uh, me to do this. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, I also think it's it's really important to nurture this creativity, especially when we're young, right? Yeah, and because we can, especially today with the phone and everything, we we get distracted and we, you know, kids they they watch TV all the time or game on the iPhone, and I think that's 
for for the development it's not such a great idea <laughs> so i think as well it's it's important to nurture that and my mom as well she also um i can remember that she once she called it the whole apartment we were living in so and i forgot about that for a while and at one point i re remembered it again and i'm like okay yeah that's that's probably where i got my creativity from or you know where i got this uh yeah sense of yeah pa painting and l l love for colors and everything so that happened for me too and i'm really grateful for that i mean that's uh, yeah that's wonderful cool and ever since like like okay you were your parents nurtured that and you got encouraged to you know to be creative and was there a time in your life when that got a bit lost and then it came back again yeah um a little bit after my my teenage years um i I changed um, and life got heavy, a lot more work. I went to university. I didn't have time for things. Mm -hmm. um, so I started, it was, it was a good few years, about four years that I, I felt like I didn't have time to do anything. Mm -hmm. um, and then I remember I was helping my dad clean his stuff and he had paintings that I'd done of rainbows in his office. It, it was clearly when I was like five years old and really poorly done but he still had it up in his office um in a picture frame on his wall and um, he was like yeah i love that that was that's when you came he remembered when i did that painting and he loved it he cherished it all those years even though that i could have probably done better ones for him he he never changed it um so then in my final year of university i had I had time to do extra courses because um, I was already over credited. So I decided to have some fun and do art courses in my final year of university. And then I just had so much fun learning um, so many different types of art. It was just modern art um, and lots of using your body. And I didn't even know that that kind of art existed. All I knew that, you know, painting, canvas, mm -hmm. I didn't even know that other forms of art um, could be that way, especially in Trinidad. Um, so I learned a lot there and then I started to little dabble and that's when my mom asked me to do her ceilings and <laughs> I do ceilings now, apparently, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. And then I started adapting it more into my career as I got older. Um, and then I did lose it again. Um, at some other points where I felt really low, really. Um, uh, I experienced depression a few times in, in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and at one point in time, it got really bad. And that's where this one helped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we will talk more about that. And um, just to say about what, what, what you said, I can really relate to that because I also had times where I was really into art and I, it was nurtured in, in school and I did different things. But at one point it got lost and I got busy and I basically found it again when I also was, I don't know, I don't know if I want to say depression because I'm not even sure what this really is or like how, how far it went for me. But I just can remember that I was very sad and very lost. And that's also when I f found art. So for me, it was more the a process of actually creating something that brought, brought me back to life and gave me, you know, this sense of purpose and joy again. And so I'm um, like sometimes sadness and depression and these things, they can help us to actually, you know, go to the next level. And I guess for some reason they happen. And for me, it was really uh, actually a gift that this happened because that's why I found art. And then I never stopped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, tell me more when we when you first met me, that was in 2019. And like what made you? Yeah, curious about my art. Um, I can't remember how it popped up on Facebook, mm -hmm. but it did. Um, and I scrolled through. Um, I remember, I remember being at work, yeah. <laughs> scrolling through, doing things you're not supposed to do at, at the office, scrolling through, and then I stumbled upon this one, and I instantly felt my whole. Um, my whole body react. My my breath was taken away. I was suddenly awake, and I think I just looked at it for what for me felt like, you know, almost an hour, 
Um, I'm hoping it wasn't that long <laughs> for work purposes, but it just felt like I just stared at it. Um, and that, that was a low point in my life too, but I just, I had it up on my screen. I never take it off. Um, I'm one of those people who keeps 50 tabs on my computer up. So I kept it there in a tab because I just thought it was pretty amazing. And I didn't close it. And the next day I happened to look at it again. And I said, okay, I'll keep it up. It's nice. Um, and it still made me feel like I, I lost my breath, but I woke up a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I kept it there, kept it there. And then one day I, my computer shut down and I lost everything. And I went into sheer and utter panic. I panicked. I I searched for it. I could not remember anything, Oliver. I couldn't remember where I found it. I couldn't remember your name. I couldn't. All I could remember is this image. And I would look up blue images or, or green images, sea-looking paintings, everything. <laughs> anyway, I managed to find. It. Uh, and it was way down in my history because the tab was always open. So I managed to find it. Um, and I think that after then, that same week, I said, no, I have to message you and ask you. I I, I needed it. It, mm-hmm. it wasn't about wanting it. It was that this this was a part of me and I needed it. I needed it to, to breathe. I needed mm-hmm. it to wake up, to live. <laughs> mm, beautiful. So. Amazing. Amazing. And yeah, so yeah, amazing story. I'm still like when I hear this, it's, it's so amazing to hear that that uh, you know my art and art art in general can make such a big impact on people, right? So when you unpacked it a little bit more, that you said you needed it, what what, what was it like? I know it's hard to explain, but yeah, what was it the, the 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 feeling that it gave you, or like how would you unpack it a little bit more? It. My brain was so compact with, at that time, it was my depression. Mm -hmm. It was a stress. It was feeling lost in my life because I felt like I had accomplished so many things. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd accomplished a lot of things that I wanted to accomplish. But at the same time, I was missing something. I was missing a part of myself, a part that I wanted not only from the outside world, but from, I mean, later on, I learned it was from within. I I needed that, that joy of just living in the here and now and being present. Mm -hmm. Um, And then being in my field as being a therapist, I know about self care and I know about depression. I know about um, persons who go through it. So I, I, I knew that this is something I was experiencing. I knew that my brain was feeling so compacted um, and overwhelmed with thoughts of not feeling accomplished enough, but yet at the same time feeling that I had accomplished everything I had set out to do. Mm -hmm. Um, So what next? What is my purpose in life? There was almost a dark hole of of nothing. and for me, I am very, I, I live by an ocean, the beach is 20 minutes away. I go at least once a week, I'm there. And I have a strong, I've always had a sp- strong spiritual connection to the ocean. Mm-hmm. So this is for me like being in the ocean, um, which is my sense, my core of life, um, where I feel renewed, where I feel like I can evolve and grow and be um, in the present moment and just existing. So it was my brain was so compacted and compound and instantaneously um, looking at this painting, it was as if it was a release. I can have that that calm, that Mm -hmm. tranquility, that ability to just exist in the moment and not feel the depth of despair that I was experiencing. Wow, that's amazing, that's incredible. So yeah, as you said, uh, you had this phase of depression and just by looking at it, it helped you. My, my, my brain, and I, it was uncompacted. It was, <laughs> that's a word. Uh, <laughs> not sure. It, 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. If that's the word, it uncompacted. <laughs> so and, and and that's what I try to do in my in in my work is you know, so so the way I explain it to my clients is that you have a Coke, you, you know, Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. If you shake a Coca-Cola bottle, that's all the stress that you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. And then it'll burst. So that that's like your, your overwhelming amount of emotions. But I was able to put my emotions, put the Coke bottle down and let my emotions settle just by looking at that. And then it was like I can breathe. So my brain got oxygen, my, my body was able to um, decompress, my nervous system was able to calm down and then that made me able, at least for those m moments where I would be sitting in front of, well initially it was a picture on my screen, mm -hmm. um, I can decompress, my nervous system can calm down, I can come back to right here in this present moment and just be but also be with some clarity, be with some, some peace and calm. Mm. I wouldn't say joy as yet because I didn't reach joy as yet, but at least I had that moment of peace and calm and ability to know that I can survive and live and live well. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing story. Yeah, that really also reminds me, yeah, again, the power of art that art really can have and it looks like that I chose the right name. So we felt both this tranquility and calmness. And people also say like, I am a fire person, also from horoscope and in many different ways. I'm fire, that's also why I'm so driven. And um, I also know other very successful people that were talking that they are fire and you know, that's all about drive, setting goals, achievement, and that can be very exhausting. So usually mm -hmm. for those people, it's very good to, you know, be on the water, like by the ocean, or anything that represents the ocean, right? And when I did this painting, even though I did a lot of, like, I, I love, back then I did a lot of splash paintings. So that means like really taking a lot of color and splash it on there. And so this is more, something more exciting, energizing, and the painting always, often always give, often also give this feeling of energy and excitement. But this one was different, this really for me as well. I guess it was the color um, that made me also feel tra tra this tranquility. And at the time, I also realized that th this tranquility is so important for me because I have been always pushing. So yeah, yeah it looks like that it somehow found you and that's, that we both felt something similar with this piece. Yeah, that's yeah. really amazing, it's amazing. I remember messaging you and I was in pure panic. I was, how how am I going to get it into the country here? How am I going to to pay for this? How am I going to pay you in, in a totally different country? Is, you know, and then mailing takes a couple months anyway. Am I going to give it, get it in one piece? Am I going to mm -hmm. get it three pieces? Mm -hmm. I was scared. I was wondering, this is a random Facebook scam. I said, oh, okay. Like, I was in pure panic. But you just said, no problem. You want it? Tell me. I will organize it for you. I'll wrap it for you. I'll do this. Um, and I think you'd had a sale and you allowed me to, ex you know, have that sale. And then I didn't know what I could do in one month. You, you, you helped me, whatever. You helped me to get this. With all my doubts, you helped me to get this. And I needed that. Um, I really thank you for being so patient with me. You're always so patient with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're you're welcome. I mean, this is this is my mission, right? If I'm not helping or if I'm not patient, sometimes you know be, people get busy or there are things in in life happening, and yeah, and then I just need to be patient and and keep supporting as much as I can, right? So I think that's also a really great thing that you said because I think many people have some some have more some have less but i think some people that that might see my art they feel also some some kind of doubt they are maybe too shy or too afraid to ask maybe they are thinking that they cannot afford it it's too too high of a price but in in my mind you never know if you not ask right because what what means expensive for one person is is not expensive for the other so it's all very it really all depends so um, can can you talk a bit? Why why did you even though you had doubts, you still asked me and you still contacted contacted me? 
Yeah, they were, I needed it. Yeah. They were, my my soul could not be parted from this. That's how that's how deep this went. I've never mm-hmm. felt that way before, but I know it needed to be with me always. Mm-hmm. Um. So I, you know, eventually I saw your name and I just clicked it. I just messaged, and then even when I read your message and you you said no problem, you'll handle it. I don't think I replied for a little while. I'm like. No, this is not real. Mm-hmm. My self doubt, my doubts in the universe was so high. It was like, no, this can't be working out. <laughs> but it was, and it it did. Um, mm-hmm. and it took a couple of months to get here, but that's just shipping and whatnot. So I knew that. Mm-hmm. And when it came, it sat down a little while. I wasn't. Um, my house wasn't built, and I wanted it for my house. I didn't have place to put it. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to keep it safe, um, so it, it stayed a little while where it was. <laughs> um, it took a long time to go up into this spot, mm-hmm. but it made its way. And through, but even though it it took a long time to get put up, and it took a while for the wall to be built because mm-hmm. um, the house wasn't built. Mm-hmm. It was always with me. Yeah. So so when I messaged you, it was. It was a moment of should I, shouldn't I? But then it's Facebook. I can always close off the chat and say I don't want to talk to you again. I can always block people. <laughs> so messaging you wasn't difficult. And then your responses, as I say, you're so patient. You, you, even if I didn't respond, you know, you, because I didn't respond out of fear, mm-hmm. um, out of not knowing what to tell you. Mm-hmm. out of an inability to tell you, look, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to ship it. I don't even know how to pay in a different country. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, but you made it all so easy. You just, re- you, you were quick in your responses. You were like, no problem, I can do this. Mm-hmm. And I think getting that is what really helped me to get it. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, good insight. I mean, that's really what I want to do. I want to make it easy for people. Right. So they basically can just say, I want this and I organize everything for them so they can, you know, just suddenly see it in front of their house and enjoy it. That, that's what I want to do, really, to make it easy for people um, who enjoy and appreciate art. And so I also wanted to ask you about the, the artwork. If you like, did you ever think before to buy an artwork or was this really a spontaneous thing that happened? Or did you, yeah, did you plan it? Um, I've, I mean, I've thought before to have art pieces, but it, I before was living um, by my parents, you know, it, that I, I didn't need to buy artwork because there was already, they already had our artwork. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't plan to buy it at all. Mm-hmm. I, I lost, it was literally all in moments. I lost the the painting on my on my screen and then I messaged you right away and there was no thought Mm. and then Mm. eventually I went home and I told my family I bought an art piece how did they react (laughs) (laughs) well I I was like I spent a couple thousand on an art piece and I thought that they were gonna be like what did you spend all that money on my dad is my dad was completely he was like you like it? Okay, well, that's a good investment then. <laughs> Amazing. I was so surprised. And, and my dad is a businessman, so he thought yeah. about it as an investment. My mom said, yes, treat yourself to something for your birthday. Well, I think it was my birthday or Christmas. I decided to treat myself for. Mm-hmm. Um, so I said, yeah, I, I use that as, as my excuse. This is going to be my, my a gift I'm giving myself. <laughs> and they were lovely. They were they don't understand it mm-hmm. they don't understand it but that's okay they they are fully and utterly support that i love it that's great yeah yeah as you said it's an investment emotionally we were talking before the interview about that right it's an emotional investment but also a financial investment it's yeah. it, it's both but you uh, yeah you bought it uh, primarily because of the financial investment so uh, the emotional investment i mean so what it gave you from the feelings, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mine was the emotional investment, 
But then, I mean, I've seen you evolve. I, I mean, I've watched how your, even the way you present your paintings, uh, your artwork, even the way you run your, your, your Facebook page and the way you talk to your collectors, I've watched all that evolve. So I know that it's now a financial investment, but for me, the emotional investment, that the amount I've gained is so much more worthwhile than the financial that, um, I mean, I'm I'm glad that I do some savings and did this because this has been the greatest investment for me. Mm, um, so, so I, now I thoroughly and I didn't understand it before. Why would why would people spend so much? You know, um, but now I understand. Now I understand. Amazing. Yeah. So when you when you found the art piece, did you also because I know like. For, for some people, they might want to feel the same as you. They want to find this art piece, you know, that gives them this connection. And I mean, I know it myself. I also love to look at other artists and their artworks. And there are some artworks that just they speak to me, right? And they, I feel something. And those are the artworks that I would invest in, of course. More, I would, so I would more invest into something that, yeah, gives me, first of all, this emotional connection. Because there is really, there is art out there for everyone, I think. That can create this emotion so again like did you like probably you saw a post from me i guess on facebook um i posted a lot in in, in different facebook facebook groups and w were there can you remember were there like many paintings from me or was this like and and you were looking through it and then you saw it or how how it did this happen yeah this whole collection mm -hmm. You had, I, I think it was a many blue and green um, paintings. It was a whole album of them. Mm -hmm. um, and blue happens to be my favorite color. Yeah. I like things that are blue. Um, and, and, I like thing, and I like things that can calm me down, um, as you're talking, that fire kind of spirit. Mm -hmm. So I like to have things that can ground me and you know calm me down a lot mm -hmm. but it was just my favorite color also so i was looking through the whole album and yeah i really liked it but this one pulled me in mm. okay. it was and, and as i said it's a full physiological reaction my my body spoke to me my brain couldn't talk at that time but my body pulled me in and i and I think that's now I know what I want to look for. Now I never knew before. Now I know that anytime I want to purchase an art piece, I want to have that possible instantaneous physiological grab to it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. So it's so it's really it's not it, it's physically right. It's a. You, you, I mean, I had this as well. Like, there are really artworks that just make you. Like they really have a reaction, and and I think the greatest artists they can create this, like they can create this more and more on purpose. Like like one of my idols, I mean, I will never paint like him or do stuff like him. But Damien Hirst, he makes amazing stuff, and he became very like he's he. I think he's now the richest artist and also super super famous. And what he did is like he got like a big big white shark into a, like a box with some liquid so he you know he will pres preserve and stay in there but it's, it's a real shark so when people look at that you feel something and i think that that's the main reason why people are so fascinated even though it might be something like fear and be you know being scared but he he was he managed to create something where people almost everyone feels something and i think that's really powerful like art that makes you feel something that's that's art that that i love and i think that's what i love about art in general and my mission is just to use that in a positive way right i want to make people feel good because that's i believe it's all like i believe emotions are a big 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 part of our lives because when we when we feel good we create good stuff in our in our life and we we make an impact we we make an impact with our family our friends and in business, in work, right? That's when, when we feel good. If we don't feel good, yeah, then everything, you know, doesn't work out so well, right? So I, I think emotions are really important. So if art can support you, that's that's a great thing then. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Um, and, and, and I like what you said. I mean, in terms of it's, 
so I have I have this this belief in 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 certain things in in attracting you you have a positive mindset you can attract more positive mindset you can give to your family your friends your 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 people so I totally agree with you yeah. um and I I think you I I know you have managed to do it um because it's what you've managed to do for me so mm-hmm. so putting it and and I think artists being an artist is really difficult because you have to be in tune with your own emotions um and then it even if you're not it expresses itself in in art because that's what i do i i do art therapy so it mm-hmm. it comes out yeah. and it's quite difficult so i know that you put yourself into there you put yourself into the this work and now there's like a piece of you sitting here and that piece of you has helped me hmm beautiful um, <laughs> so spread it you're spreading the vibe <laughs> amazing yeah that that's that's what i want to do that's my mission and i'm happy it works i'm happy yeah and there are more and more people that uh, feel the impact so i'm really grateful for that yeah yeah and let me ask you did something change for you like we talked about you know how we met and everything and now looking looking at now did anything change how you see the artwork or how you feel about it yeah how did how does how did this evolve um so i i can't separate it from my depression because it's so un, it's so tied in mm-hmm. um but for me it is n- it it did evolve for a little while. I couldn't look at it. I knew it was there. It was packed up. I didn't have the house. And that was also very stressful for me. When can I put this up? When can I move in? When can I have um, my space finished? So it was a lot of stress, but I knew it was there. So it was sort of a little while it became an anchor. Mm-hmm. An anchor that this will happen. I will have the house. I will be able to put it up. It will happen. I know it because this has, this already has its space. I've already decided what wall I want it on, where it's going to be. Mm-hmm. So it 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 had already happened in my mind, um, and then later on I I learned that that is actually a practice of evolving your brain, um, and and uh, you know law of attraction and believing in the universe uh, that's that's the practice i also fell in at the same time Mm -hmm. so from being a source of relief it's moved to being an anchor as i know what will happen in the future and now it is now it is i i mean i i'm i'm around it every day it's in my entrance um by my door now it's no longer that gut-wrenching force that pushes me into a breath of uh, being settled because I no longer need that push. Mm-hmm. I needed that push back then. Mm-hmm. Now it is this, my body just enjoys having it there, or being able to see it, um, being able to touch it because I am very, I love, one of my favorite things about this is that it's not a flat piece it's got texture it's got movement um i don't allow other people to touch it but (laughs) because it's got so much white on it Mm -hmm. but i have enjoyed studying the way it feels literally on the canvas and it still calms my nervous system down when i do need it Mm -hmm. it still allows me to breathe when i need it but it's not as a shock now it is just yes I am here and it did work out. It did find its place. And as other things will find their places, other things will work. I just need to give life its time to work itself out and it will. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a reminder also mm-hmm. of where I have been to where I am now. I actually think this is I think this is the most powerful reminder um, of where I was Mm -hmm. to where I am now. So I know that I have a, I I can make it through. I I can come from the the deepest depths of my own darkness Mm -hmm. to 
seeing light and love and experiencing joy and being able to dance around my house and feel alive. I, I, I no longer have those feelings. And I think this is very much tied to that journey. Mm-hmm. And I feel proud. I feel content. I feel enlightened with it. Um, so I'd like, I'd like to keep it around always in my wow. with me. <laughs> so it's, it's really the painting is, is developing with you, like evolving with you. That's it's beautiful, amazing. Mm-hmm. And you just touched on something with the structure. And I'm curious to know, like, was it for you a surprise when you saw it in real life? Because you first saw it online, right? You just saw a picture from it, which is flat. And then on one point you actually received it in your home. So was there anything that surprised you a lot or how, how was this experience? Yeah, when I opened it, I did not, ex- it was like a different, it, it was like a different painting, but same feeling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I didn't notice the the glitter. Oh yeah. On, I don't know if you can see it. So it's often like a special effect that you, you usually don't see it on the picture. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see all that, that glitter. Mm-hmm. And then this part here, um, that white part. I didn't realize it had so much texture to it. Yeah, there was a lot I... of color on there. <laughs> yeah, but it was, and it's not that easy to um, to understand how you did that or or what what drove you to that. I mean, I'm I'm very curious. <laughs> into what you were experiencing when you did this. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know if you could tell me about that one, but I I didn't expect the texture. um, And I I had forgotten that's one thing that I love about paintings. I love acrylics. I didn't know it was acrylics. I actually didn't ask you anything about the painting. I just told you I needed it. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't ask you anything. (laughs) Um, But I didn't expect the glitter, but it also, it was... It was like a little extra sparkle that I don't usually, I'm not, I'm not the type of person to like glittery things, but mm-hmm. it was something that in, it made it more alive and more joy. And I think that also was where I evolved too. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, a little bit a sparkle there. Yeah. But the texture, the textures, I didn't expect that. Okay. I didn't, I thought it would be a flat piece. Um, but the movement in that, the, the 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 fact that the painting changes in texture and thickness and the way you did the brush strokes or the splashing and all that, mm-hmm. it's like I can feel it, mm-hmm. um, literally <laughs> and emotionally. Nice, beautiful. Yeah, I mean, the glitter is something I like to add and it's very subtle, right? So it's not something that disturbs or something. It's just like a little extra. I also have it. In, in this piece, you, you don't see it from here. You would need to see it from close. But they are like the blue flowers, they have like glitter in it. And if I make a picture, you don't see it. But when you see it in life and you walk, you know, you walk by, you start to suddenly see, oh, wow, it, you know, the blue flowers are, they're shiny. They have glitter. So I love to do that. It's yeah. just an, an extra ad. Yeah. So it works. Yeah. Well, good, good. Um, so I have one more question that I'm very curious about because I never asked that before and I'm always wondering myself as an artist, as an artist I know why, like I have my own reason, right? But I'm curious to know what you think about that. So you said it was a big investment for, for you back then and, and you loved the ocean and you felt, you felt this tranquility and calmness. So why didn't you buy, let's say, a picture of, of an ocean? that would be like 10 times less than the painting? I have a million pictures of the ocean on my phone. I go every weekend. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I go during the week. Um, I'm surrounded by oceans, but it it was the way my body reacted. I could not separate myself from this. Mm-hmm. And yes, it was just a picture on my Facebook. And I had considered the thought of just printing it out. But it wasn't the same. I needed it in my hands. And there was no question as to its worth. Mm-hmm. It it was worth it. Um, yeah. 
I just I needed the time to to make sure I could put the funds in place, mm -hmm. and I worked towards it. I I put it as I'm going to have it. And there was just no second thought. This was completely and utterly spontaneous in the moment, and there was no question or doubt in my mind. And my body would not allow me to have doubts about whether I I wanted this or whether I needed it. The, the, the doubts were just, you know, is this a scam? Would I, you know, how would I do this? Would it be, you know, all those unnecessary, in a sense, questions, but necessary in a business sense. Mm -hmm. There was no question. My, my body said it already. And I am, I am trained. I have, I have grown to learn how my body responds to things is very much an indicator of what is going on with me mm -hmm. internally as well as in my environment yeah 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 amazing I, I i understand what you mean i mean some people maybe also call it intuition but in 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 the end of the day there was just something telling you which was really physically that you need to have this and like for me i think it's probably also, as you said, like you have lots of pictures of the ocean. You can find it everywhere. You can Google it. And there are tons of pictures from the ocean. And um, we are unique as human beings, right? Every one of us is, is totally unique. There is no second you. There is no second me. And the same is with original art. There is really like a piece of art. If it's like an original piece of art, it's totally unique. Even when the artist creates a second one that's similar, it's still, they are both like totally unique so there's just one piece and i think that's maybe that's very deep down somewhere you know in our psychological like psychologically or in in the body i don't know know for sure but i can imagine that this is also a reason why we feel attracted to things that are unique right that are very like they're like one of a kind like we are so i think the the connection is okay. stronger probably so that i just came up with that and that's something that would make sense for me like why people are not everybody but some people are more attracted to the originals to the one of a kinds instead of you know getting a, a picture somewhere because i i agree i think there is a huge difference and also the way you treat yourself right are you saying like i allow myself like a picture for i don't know 50 100 francs or do i allow myself to get something really really special and unique and honor my uniqueness with it yeah amazing you know with a picture you wouldn't get i wouldn't have gotten the depth the um as i said the the the, the texture of it being able to embrace it a, pic a picture would just be um a shiny photograph of it of of any ocean mm -hmm. which i mean i have but i think we just need to go with the gut here yeah yeah <laughs> and i i don't I don't spend on I don't I don't shop that much to say that I spend on things I spend on necessities, mm -hmm. um, so I consider this and this I could at at the time and mm -hmm. even now I considered it, this is one of my necessities. Mm. Amazing, beautiful, yep, no beautiful, yeah. So like, would you recommend my art to anyone else? <laughs> of course, yes, <laughs> totally. <laughs> um, I think you, what you've done is amazing and it's evolving. Um, I recommend that they 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 get it. It's so much different in person, um, and you were, I say, you were so patient and so kind and so understanding with me. Um, even though it took me a little while even to to do this because since 2019, you've been really um, accommodating and it was no pressure. It was. It's it's been nice to know you and to also see you evolve. So I totally recommend it. Mm -hmm. I recommend that they go and find something that calls to them, that speaks to them, that moves your body um, in ways because the the evolution, the growth does last. Mm. Amazing, beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah. And what would you and say when you? Yeah. What would you say? What sort of person? would be interested in my kind of art style? Anybody. 
I didn't have an art style before. Um, so somebody who's never had any piece of art um, or who's never been ending to, to major collectors who have, um, you know, a great wall to, to hang this up on or an office space or, you know, in their home. Once you have space to put something, once you have a wall space, I think it would be great. And once you have a home, a bedroom, somewhere that you sleep in, you have a space because you do speak through your art, um, especially with this abundance series that I'm watching mm -hmm. and that we talked about a little bit and seeing what you put into it and what it can, what you can gain. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's for anybody. Once it, once that piece speaks to you, grab it, take it, don't even question it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. amazing. Yeah, that would be like, you, you touched already on it, but this would be the next question. Like, what would you say if somebody is on the fence? Like, not sure, should I get it? Should I not? You know, like, like, like you back then. What, what would you recommend them to do? And why do you think it's important for them to take action now and not wait too long? I was thoroughly scared that this piece would be taken by somebody else. Once I'd already made up my mind, I was afraid that you would say it's sold. And I, and I, I had thought about that. If you had said, no, it's no longer there, a piece of me would have gone missing. <laughs> mm. no. So, I mean, to me, if you have that, con if somebody has that connection to an art piece, um, just to message you, I think you would accommodate all kinds of questions and answering. And even when you didn't know, you were like, you know what, I don't know how to ship this. I'm going to, oh, I don't know how it can be done. I'm going to go and call and figure it out. Mm -hmm. And you, you did that in a matter of no time. And then you wrote me back and you said, hey, this is how it could be done. This is what you can do. These are your options. Um, I think having somebody who can give you more information and give you that sort of um, understanding that this does not have to be as difficult as parts of you is screaming that it might be difficult. Um, mm -hmm. so I'd recommend that they just message you. You're, oh. you're so kind and, <laughs> and easy to talk to. So thank you. Um, but yes. Yeah message you and just do it I and mean, figure it out from there it it will once set your mind that will work out and it will i agree i agree yeah it's always good to ask and yeah get some more information exactly so nidhi it has been amazing i have one last question for for the people that are listening and and your story has been great and i would love to know what is your number one advice for current and future art collectors if they want to start or, or have already a collection. <laughs> listen to your body, because uh, listen listen to your your feelings, your emotions. If it's screaming no, it's screaming no. But if it's screaming yes, um, or if you can feel that moment that you breathe, um, enjoy that feeling and and hold on to it and grab it because life is meant to feel that joy that uplifting that that sense of relief and and desire to breathe and um exist and grow so if you find that even for a second in any art piece i mean i don't think it it's really about what it is it's more how it makes you feel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, beautiful you want things that would uplift you. So if that's what uplifts you, go with it. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's my advice to, you know, um, both new persons and existing collectors. I mean, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great advice. I like. I love it. I love it. It's it's sometimes we make it more complicated than it is, right? So you have proven that it's sometimes you just need to go with your gut and your feeling. So, yeah, if anybody wants to talk more with you and wants to connect to you, where can they find you? Um, Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. I will tag yeah. you as well. Yeah. Yeah. That'd yeah. be good. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Good. Thank you, Nedi. It has been amazing. Great interview. It was a pleasure to talk to you and to get to, you, to know you a little bit more. And also thank you for everyone that is watching. I really appreciate your time and see you next time. Thank you, Nedi. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.
Bye. Bye.